Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about the third and last option for inter-VLAN routing, which is to use a layer 3 switch. Now, you're less likely to get tested on this option in the CCNA exam, but it's actually the option which is most commonly used in the real world. So I wanted to explain it to you here to give you the complete picture. So looking at our lab topology, it's the same as before where we've got a switch which has got both engineering and sales PCs plugged into it and we've split that into an engineering and a sales VLAN and we put the engineering PCs in access ports for the eng VLAN the sales PCs are configured on access ports for the sales VLAN. Once we've done that, the PCs will be able to communicate with each other within their own VLAN. But because the two VLANs are also in different IP subnets, ENG is using 10.10.10, sales is using 10.10.20, we're going to need to configure routing between them as well. The first two options we covered used an external router. This option, we're going to do the routing actually on the switch itself. So to be able to do that, you can't use a lower end layer 2 only switch. It has to be a layer 3 switch to be capable of doing routing. When you do have that, the switch, it doesn't use a physical interface for the routing it uses a virtual interface that is our svi a switched virtual interface so you see with the config here we configure interface vlan 10 and then ip address 10.10.10.1 and interface vlan 20 and ip address 10.10.20.1 those virtual interfaces will act as the default gateways for the pcs whenever a pc sends traffic into the switch we've already configured the switch with the access port with the correct vlan on there so the switch knows which vlan the traffic is coming in on so it knows which svi would correspond with that as long as we've got ip routing enabled on the switch and we've configured our svi switched virtual interfaces it's going to be able to route traffic between the two different vlans now, notice on here in my topology diagram, I've also got an external router, even though the switch is able to do routing itself. The reason for that is the external router is connected out to the wide area network. It's quite often the case that your connection to a service provider is not going to be using an ethernet port and our layer 3 switches only support ethernet so if you need to use a different type of interface you're going to need to have a separate dedicated router for that another reason would be that maybe there's some kind of wan feature that is required that again is not supported on the switch that is only supported on an external router so that's why we've also got the external router for the wan connectivity so whenever we've got any traffic between our internal vlans that is going to get routed on the switch that traffic never goes up to the router but whenever there's any traffic that needs to go outside the local area network that needs to go out to the wan that is going to get sent up to the router so let's check the configuration for this. Before we look at that WAN connectivity configuration, here we're just doing the inter-VLAN routing. So this is going to allow traffic between our PCs that are on the internal network, between the ENG and the sales PCs. At Global Config, first off, we have to enable IP routing, and then we configure our SVIs. So we say interface VLAN 10, IP address 10.10.10.1 with a slash 24 mask and interface VLAN 20 IP address 10.10.20.1 255.255.255.0 .255 .255 
once we've done this, the engineering and the sales PCs are going to be able to communicate with each other. We still need to do our WAN routing configuration as well though. So if I look back at the topology diagram again, you'll see that it is interface fast zero slash one on the switch, which is connected up to the router. And I need to put an IP address directly onto that physical interface. So to do that, I need to configure it as a layer three interface. A layer three interface means that it's gonna have an IP address on that interface. So I say no switch part for that. Then I can put the IP address on the interface. So I say IP address 10.10.100.1 with a slash 24 mask. And I need to configure the route to send all traffic up to the router that's going out to the WAN. So IP route, it's a default static route, o dot o dot o dot o, o dot o dot o dot o, next hop 10.10.100.2. I also need to configure a matching configuration on the router as well. If we look back at the diagram again, the inside interface on the router is fast zero slash one, the outside is slash zero slash two. So on the inside interface, I configure IP address 10.10.100.2. And on the outside interface, in this example, it's IP address 203.0.113.1. Then I need to configure a default static route for traffic going out to the WAN. So that's IP route 0.0.0.0, 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0 next hop address 203.0.113.2. And then I also need to configure a route for the internal LAN traffic as well. So that's, I, I could have configured two different routes, one for 10.10.10 slash .10 24, and one for 10.10.20 slash .10 24, but I can do that with a single summary route. So I configure 10.10.0.0, 255.255.0.0, next hop on the switch, 10.10.100.1, and that covers me for both the 10.10.10 .10 network and the 10.10.20 network. Going back to the diagram again, when we did the first two options with a router with separate interfaces or router on a stick, the router was directly connected to the 10.10 10 and the 10.10.20 networks so I didn't need to configure an explicit route for it. In this example it's the switch which is connected to those networks, the router is not so I do need to configure a route in this example. Okay so that is the configuration. Looking at the considerations here Traffic being routed within the campus is now routed across the switch backplane. It doesn't need to travel up and down physical cables to an external router like was happening with the first two options. But as we mentioned earlier in this lecture, you might still need an external router for WAN connectivity and services. Okay, so that is all the theory for our layer three switch. Next up, is to configure it in the lab. I'll do that in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.